So I always have shared comics on Instagram that usually average over 50,000 likes and 200,000 impressions. It didn't always start off this way as I had to experiment with what did and didn't work for me as an artist that could satisfy my creative drive and the audience's interests. Eventually the middle ground for me was creating Instagram comics that have somewhat of a life lesson packaged into 10 panels or less. And today I'd love to share more about how I make that happen. So so first and foremost, it's important to have the right tools and that's why I'd like to thank Clip Studio Paint for being today's sponsor. I have been using Clip Studio Paint for the past two years to make my comics because they provide tools that allow me to optimize my workflow. Some of them are highly customizable fill tools such as the lasso fill to fill in base colors and the reference layer feature to prevent coloring outside the line. For today's comic, I will be drawing a story about why do we wait for a special moment to make someone feel special. I want to draw a comic that illustrates how we as a society wait for birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays to make others feel special when really we can do those things for our loved ones on any average day. Choose a topic most people can relate to and envision yourself as the person scrolling. If you came across a comic, you would have to think, oh, that hit hard. So while a comic idea like this is cool, one of the foundational things every comic artist needs is the skill level to make their work believable. I don't believe artists need to make the most perfect work as some art styles thrive on imperfection, but making your work believable to an audience is the most important thing. So for most people who I help improve the artworks of via email consultations, my top number one tip is to always invest in your skills by practicing life drawing, diversifying your poses, if you can draw the human body in any given angle or position, you are pretty much set for anything. So that's why I'd like to show some of Clip Studio Paint's 3D modeling poses and tools you can use to reference when you draw bodies. You can basically choose any pose at any given angle in Clip Studio Paint's 3D pose library, and you should do what works for you. You know, if tracing or eyeballing it is your preference, go for it. It's a tool for you to use at your disposal. So when you are done using a 3D pose, you can always delete the pose when you're done. You can always hide it. You can also use Clip Studio Paint's 3D backgrounds or 3D objects to create backgrounds to help develop your perspective in your art. And you can also do these things on an iPad. You can either use the 3D models and copy it, or you can use it straight up. Or you can just use it as an inspiration reference just for the angles and perspectives. Again, the canvas is yours. As a comic artist, you will always have to be drawing a variety of scenes similar to a storyboard artist, so it's important to grow familiarity with different angles and positions that you draw, and that's why I find these 3D tools helpful. Clip Studio Paint provides a variety of paneling and speech bubble options you can use. Personally, I like to play with the irregular shapes for panels and bubbles, so you can try to play with the options Clip Studio Paint has and figure out which arrangement works best on your comic page. I prefer to give more space on my page for bigger moments, bigger emotional impact, and smaller panels for expositional moments and reaction panels. It's important to tie in the way you execute the story to the story's intentions. If you make a comic that doesn't deliver the story's message well through your drawings, choice choice of paneling, choice of word bubbles, and some people may not understand the story idea, which is why it's important to see how your whole comic works together illustratively. You can switch between your tablet and iPad if you have one. If you are on the go slash want to change your environment, you can use Clip Studio Paint on your iPad somewhere else. It is also available on Android for those who use Android tablets. This is helpful for me as an artist who is now working independently and needs a change in background from time to time because otherwise I'd just be stuck in my office all day. I prefer to save the final writing and dialogue last in my comics as my gut feelings for changing up illustrations and drawings last minute might sometimes affect the wording choice, the placement of the speech bubbles, or any last minute details. So here is your last moment to really tie in the message of your story, add in any supporting dialogue that your drawings may have been unable to deliver, and read through your comic as if you are the actual audience and see how your comic hit you. So lastly, posting the comic online. You can always use the 
caption as a final way of tying up any last words, disclaimers you want to make, but don't overly rely on your caption on Instagram or YouTube to compensate for your comic. You should respond to your audience as they comment on it though, so you allow people to feel like they can share the same feeling and that's how you create engagement. Think about what about your story made it shareable and relatable so it can be shared again next time or how you can make a different story that delivers the same impact. So it's also important to know that not every comic or post you're going to post is going to perform well. At the end of the day, there are a lot of factors that determine whether or not your art is going to get seen or exposed due to the algorithm. And remember that not everything is within your control. So the one thing I do encourage for you to remember as an artist is to not give up. And while it is very basic advice, it is just something that I feel you need to actually practice as well because getting something right requires many tries, many attempts before you land on the right type of story, art style, or any form of art that's going to make the right type of impact on your audience. One of the things that I suggest for you to treat your Instagram or any other social media page where you post your artwork is to treat it like a sandbox. This is the place where you're going to play with ideas, different artwork, different story attempts, or different things where you should feel free to make mistakes. Remember, it's just a social media page. This is not your work unless if you are a social media creator or influencer or whatever. This is a place for you to do some trial and runs with some story ideas, art and comics, and see how the audience reacts and try to repeat the ones that performed well without, you know, of course, being a broken record. Like you want to be able to create the same feeling, deliver the same type of emotional impact, but that doesn't always mean literally copying and pasting the same drawing again, because I personally feel like your audience knows when you re-upload something and your most loyal audience will definitely catch it if you kind of share either the exact same type of drawing or art again just to satisfy the algorithm or just to do what you need to do to be consistent and if you feel that's what is going to help you sure go ahead but trust me I feel like a part about creating that virality sometimes does require like followers and support from an audience and also just accruing that trust from your viewers over time. And for those who are, you know, trying to make a one hit wonder without any followers or anything, sometimes it's possible. Sometimes you have to actually just create art that is based on what is currently trending. That might mean making fan art for a show or a game that's popular at the time or a current world event or something like that. You would just have to be really good at hopping onto that train and bridge that gap between you and your audience based on this trending event or this popular game or show at that time. But again, as a reminder, just know that not everything is going to hit the first time you do it. It's not like you can follow all of these rules and then you post a comic or piece of artwork and it's going to do well on Instagram. For me, I had to do many trial and errors before I started getting comics that had active, consistent engagement with an audience. And some of the things that I did were a mix of these two suggestions. I would make comics based on people I knew in my life and also TV shows and movies that we all watched as kids like Bambi, The Land Before Time or things that we were able to relate to. But I can also make stories that are personal to my life but include some sort of life lesson that others might find applicable. But if you want to learn more about how to create more successful social media posts with your artwork, please check out these two videos about why your art doesn't get likes or followers and why nobody likes your art on a technical social media level. <gasps> oh, hello, Moon Pie. Are you here to share the wonders of... <laughs> Moon Pie is on her lunch break. Lastly, you can always use the video export tool on Clip Studio Paint to make 
videos to help level up your social media game. I've been doing this for real so that my comics can reach a new audience. You can put in a watermark if you want to include your name and you can customize it to whatever your needs are. So otherwise, thank you to Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring today's video. You can try out Clip Studio Paint using the link in the description box below. I'd love to see what comics or artwork you all will make and feel free to tag me in them on Instagram and I'll check it out. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next one.